in this hyperfold equation or infinite power tower or super exponentiation that is shown here, we want to find and see whether there is a solution for x, whether this equation is solvable. So what is the value of x? Can we find it quickly? Okay, so there is a quick way to find this. Uh, before that, let me mention that hyper 4 uh, equations uh, are also referred to as infinite power towers. So infinite power towers. As you can see, we have towers of power here, like this one. And uh, they are also referred to as um, tetration. Another name for this thing is super exponentiation. So super exponentiation. Okay. And uh, of course, the infinite um, repeated exponentiation is also another name. Uh, the symbol or notation that people use to indicate such a thing like this one, uh, sometimes they use this notation, double uh, arrow upward. So this means exactly what is happening here. Sometimes they use a left exponent like this instead of right exponent, and they would say limit of this when n goes to infinity. So by this, they basically mean x to the power x to the power x and going to forever. Okay, so before I show you the uh, quick solution for this, I would like to thank you, especially uh, Dariush, uh, for your reviews and for corrections. So the earlier version of this had a typo, uh, which uh, I'm thankful to Dariush to notice that and uh, comment on that so that I made the correction. And this video is now the corrected version. So thank you very much. Okay, so with that said, let me just quickly... Um, answer the question here and uh, see how we can solve this. Okay, so um, focus on the left-hand side here. Left-hand side of equation is this one. And uh, focus specifically uh, here. So in the exponent, we have a super exponentiation or infinite power tower. Let's refer to this one as y. So y, what do we have left left-hand side of this equation? We have x to the power, so the base x, I'm going to keep it. And uh, then we have 2, so 2, and then after that we have just y. Okay, obviously we can write this in the form of x to the power y to the power 2. Basic properties of exponent or exponentiation. Now, let's substitute y using this. So if I do that, then I end up with x to the power I'm substituting for y, and this goes forever, and of course the whole thing to the power 2. So uh, you can see that effectively the left-hand side of this equation is this component to the power 2. So because of this observation, I can basically write the whole equation like this. Left-hand side is in the form of, uh, let's say, um, so as I said, if I refer to this one as y, which we named it, so left-hand side is basically just y to the power 2, as you can see here. For right-hand side, we clearly have 4 times y times, uh, su uh, subtract from that, 4, so 4, so minus 4. And this clearly is just as simple as uh, y squared minus 4y plus 4 equal to 0. Okay, the rest of it is uh, super straightforward. The rest of it is as simple as just uh, saying, if I just continue doing so, uh, this means y minus, obviously it means y minus 2 to the power 2 equal to 0, which means uh, y should be equal to 2, obviously. Okay, so what did we get to? Remember, this is y. So we got that this has to be equal to 2. Therefore, the only thing I need to do to solve this problem is setting this whole thing to... So let me make sure I'm not missing something. There you go. So I want to set this whole thing, which is equal to y. So this whole thing is equal to y. And I want to set that equal to 2 because I just got it, that it has to be 2. Okay, we use the same trick here. This exponent is y itself as well, because it goes up to infinity, and we said that y has to be equal to 2. Therefore, the exponent is equal to 2. So with that in mind, I can, in summary, say 
my equation specifically to solve this becomes x to the power 2 should be equal to 2. As a result, x is either square root of 2 or is a square, negative a square root of 2. So this doesn't work because if we substitute it back into this equation by replacing every x with negative rad 2, we get uh, not a real number, we get an imaginary number. So the right answer is this one. And we found the answer to the problem. So basically, we found that, yes, this whole thing converges, and the solution is x equal to square root of 2. That's the answer to this equation. All right, so um, what we need to be careful about is while in this case it was not difficult to find the um, solution for let's say equation like this in general it's not easy there is a very limited range uh, for these kind of a uh, super exponentiation or infinite power tower to converge and uh, euler actually was one among the first uh, mathematicians who about 200 uh, more than 200 years ago uh, dealt with this kind of problems and solve it uh, there is a famous, so let me show you as an add-on. So um, there is this, if you see here, let me bring it up so that it's observable. All right, so what I want to show you is this. Okay, there you go. Let me show you this plot. It's helpful. So this plot, what is it showing us? This plot is saying that if in the equation of, uh, say, um, y equal to, let me make sure that you can see. So I'm, I'm talking about the equation that we are saying y equal to x to the power x to the power x, and this goes forever. So x-axis is the x value, the base, and uh, the outcome is y on the y-axis. So what is happening here? For instance, when you're saying you want to set this equal to 2, you're saying you want y to be equal to 2, so y equal to 2, and if you extend this, you can see that it is crossing the line, at, at the, the curve, the plot, here, which translates to this value of x, which is exactly, let me just make it more accurate, so this value of x, which is exactly rad 2, square root of 2, which is roughly 1.4 uh, something, 1.4, uh, let's say 1.41 or 1.42. Okay, <clears throat> it is very close to the limit that is applicable to this problem. It is proven that uh, while in this case the solution is of course x equal to rad 2 and it exists, but generally speaking this sort of a super exponentiation or infinite power tower only is solvable when y or output is in the range of, as shown here, in this range. So as long as y is in this range, then there is a solution for this problem. Beyond this range, and take a look at the max of the range is e, which is 2 point roughly, 2.71 for say. So what this indicates is if you set uh, y equal to x to the power x to the power x to the power forever to 3, this doesn't have a solution. We can't find a real x for this. So that's why I'm saying the super exponentiation or the infinite power tower or hyper 4 equation has in this shape and format has very limited uh, convergence range. Um, and uh, this sort of curve is trying to highlight that, that what is the range for x? Uh, that x range is basically in the range of uh, e to the 1 over e and in the range of e to the uh, negative e. So only in this range uh, we have a solution for this problem, not uh, outside this range. Uh, so as a result, uh, as I said, this equation doesn't have a solution, uh, a real solution. Okay, so um, I hope that this example is helpful in terms of illustrating um, an example of a sort of a hyper 4 or uh, infinite power tower equation that happened to be solvable. 
and uh, we just found the solution for it to be x equal to rad 2 um, and uh, as I mentioned Euler uh, more than 200 years ago was among the first mathematician that uh, solved this uh, super exponentiation and uh, showed that the uh, the answer to this one is just x equal to rad 2. Alright, um, I hope this is helpful.